Hello, hello, I'm Katz and welcome to today's video. So today we're going to be talking about my free to play fusion plan for the latest fragment summon in the game, Brugard Jerobum. I think that's how you say his name. And yes, he is a fragment summon and boy is he <laughs> underwhelming. We're not even going to bury the lead here. But uh, yes, he's in the Ogren tribes, force affinity, legendary, of course, defense based and talk about whether or not he's worth your resources. And I must say he's definitely a tough sell to save the least dare i say the second worst fusion of the year behind the incarnate let me know in the comment section down below which fusion you think was worse between him and the incarnate so starting things off with the a1 that's an a1 we've seen on plenty of champions nowadays but it has a 50 percent chance when booked a, or a single target two hitter but the 50 percent chance of decreasing the cooldown of a random ally skill by one turn and if th their cooldown is decreased it will fill the turn meter by 10 percent which is nice in fairness and this a1 i know it seems a lot more commonplace now nowadays but honestly it is helpful for these types of champions to exist in the game as some sort of counterplay towards the lockout mana that is still pervasive in pvp but nonetheless it's not the best skill when we get through the rest of his kit here on the a2 full cleanse which is nice three turn cooldown when booked heals all allies by 15 percent of this champion's max hp you can build him with a fairly decent amount of hp although he's not one of the highest in the game at 18k but you can still get a serviceable amount of hp on him so it could be a pretty substantial heal and then it will also heal each of those allies by an extra 2% for each debuff removed from them by the skill. So it's a little bit weaker than Pythion's. Pythion is a 5% heal uh, per debuff remove, I believe. So it's about half of what Pythion's does. So it's a little bit weaker. And obviously you're not getting a block debuffs with the full cleanse. And then it places a shield on all allies equal to 15% of the champion's max HP. So once again, it's a pretty substantial heal. And then you also get a shield equivalent to the amount you were healed as well. But again, it's not going to be game breaking in any way, shape or form, good or bad. And then lastly, on the A3 has a 100% chance when booked of decreasing the the duration of enemy debuffs by one turn or increasing the duration of enemy debuffs by one turn and then increasing the duration of all ally buffs by one turn unfortunately on a four turn cooldown you like to see this type of ability on a three turn cooldown because that just helps uh, synergize with other uh, champions who have it on a three turn cooldown for like infinity style teams or anything like that four turn cooldown is a little bit too long for or your boss will start falling off essentially but uh, it also fills turn meter for all allies by 20%. So yeah, just reading the kit overall, extremely underwhelming. Yes, the A2 is very, very nice. And if you need some sort of healer, cleanser, shielding champion for like Ice Golem or Dragon Progression, he can most certainly do that job for you. But outside of that, particularly for you know, folks like me in the end game, he's going to be straight to the vault if they even go for him in the first place. Um, a little bit of saving grace on the passive, but not as much as I would have hoped. But uh, two turn cooldown when booked on the active effect. I guess we can start with the passive effect. So turn meter effects on against this champion are decreased by 50%. So they're just less effective. So if it's a full turn meter steal, it will only take half of his turn meter. Then it applies to bosses and anything or and champions as well. And then it will also fill his turn meter by 20% whenever a CC debuff, including sheep, is placed on an ally. Now, my first thought here was that, oh my God, they actually gave us an Armand's counter. And then I kept reading the kit and trying to understand it and seeing a little bit of what I feared in action uh, come to pass is essentially what happens is uh yeah armands can only reduce his turn meter by half and then he'll get some turn meter boosting by him stunning everyone else on your team but if this guy is not in stone skin and or immunity um he's gonna get stunned as well so you can boost the turn meter all you want and fast uh, and speed up the time to get to your turn that you miss by being stunned so it's kind of worthless. And even if you aren't stunned, Armand stole enough turn meter from everyone else that he's still going to cut in ahead of you. And then he can just sheep you and then you can't cleanse. So yeah, not the Armand's counter I was hoping for. And so definitely a bit of a letdown when I fully understood exactly how this passive would work. The active effect here is what's on a two turn cooldown. So whenever a CC debuff is removed or expires from an ally, it fills our turn meter by 20%. So it can be nice to kind of get your team running. Again, think more like PVE type things. This is not really going to work function well in pvp but in pve if you're dealing with a boss that's really annoying has a bunch of uh, uh cc debuffs that they throw out there this is pretty nice as far as keeping your team running as soon as the uh debuff falls off but also having the the it boost his turn meter so he can keep going around cycling back through the cleanse and lastly cementing the fact that he is most certainly a progression champion is the accuracy orb in all battles by 60 so yeah this guy is most certainly a bit of a bummer i'd probably give him like a d maybe c minus as far as a grade goes He'll like he has some potential for some things to happen but it just does like all the pieces don't really drive together and it doesn't feel like he's going to shine at any particular
particular area above anyone out that already exists in the game. So like if you have a Pythion, you're not going to need this guy. You get a equivalent, if not more, healing out of it, and you get the revive as well and on top of the damage mitigation passive. And so it's just like, I'd rather be running a Pythion anywhere I would think to run this guy. That being said, as I mentioned before, his base stats are fairly appreciable despite everything going on in his kit, but the HP 18k, it's not the highest. He's defense based, not HP based, so that could be better if he was HP based, in my opinion, to synergize better with his A2, but I digress. Defense is fairly high, just about uh, just under 1500. Base speed is fairly quick as well, 108. And then he has uh, the boost of 20 accuracy um, from base when he's ascended, and the uh, 30 is just the resistance that every champion in the game has by default so yeah like i said this guy is most certainly a tough sell and i would not fault anyone if this is the fusion they chose to skip alongside the incarnate for the year but as you guys probably know by now i still do every single fusion regardless of their quality and so continuing on with that theme i am going to be completing this fragment summon i think on paper this fusion will be one of the easier ones for the year at least i hope so but you know you never know and honestly that's a pretty good segue for us to hop over to the fusion plan spreadsheet which will be linked in the description box down below if you guys want to check it out for yourself but uh, let's talk about this fusion and anything or specific going on here. So first and foremost, it's a pretty standard layout for the most part. We have the four dungeon split. We have two classic arena tournaments, champion training tournaments it's going on right now, champion chase. We have two dungeon divers and well, we'll get to that in a bit. Uh, two, two divers, three artifact enhancement, champion training. So that's the pretty standard stuff, but note that there is no summon rush. However, there is going to be a hero's path, which is part of the fusion, which is not something that happens often. I think this is probably the third time this has occurred, but that will take the place of the summon rush. So the summon rush isn't gone. It's just going to be in the form of a hero's path that is going to be featuring points by pulling shards. And then I also suspect that this is going to be where the third dungeon divers is effectively. Um, so we can't really avoid that either. So there's still going to be a summon rush. There's still going to be dungeon divers is going to be uh, combined in this hero path. That is my prediction because champion training will already be live as well as artifact enhancement so there's not really anything else that, that can be featured in that type of event unless it's added in soul stones or something like that other than that we have the pretty standard pinch points which is my descriptor for uh when uh, champion training overlaps with a dungeon so we're kicking things off with champion training and dragon overlapping and then near the end we have champion training overlapping with ice golem but notably this champion training is only three days long which is good it's better just because the points are going to be lower just because it's a, a shorter event if it happens to have a legendary tome as the final milestone then it's a few less days of grinding in order to get that compared to like a three or to compare to like a four or a five day champion training event my expectation is that the champion chase coming up this weekend should be two x sacreds that is yet to be confirmed but that is my speculation and then the following weekend is going to be again taking place at the summon rush is going to be the hero's path which should have a progressive chance event going on during that with the release of the fusion calendar i think we can officially say that the freya deck of fate is going to be after the fusion as predicted so if you are in a position to be skipping this fusion then you could be saving up your shards until that event starts and and then lastly, for anyone who's unfamiliar with the spreadsheet, over here on the right, we have a summary of all of the milestones for each of the events and tournaments. Anything marked with an asterisk is an educated guess or a predicted guess. And then later on, I go in and fill it in with what the what they actually were based on when the events go live. And then I also mentioned some of the resources that I happen to spend on the events past. So if you do want to scroll through, I do have the data for every single fusion dating all the way back to Pythion, including you know the amount of shards I might have used if I used any and the amount of silver I spent on artifacts enhancements etc we kind of looked at it a bit earlier but always at the bottom here i do detail my energy plan which is just how i plan to spend my energy for each given day of the fusion it's not necessarily a recommendation or a guide but it is just a template that you could use if you wanted to follow my example hopping back in the game let's talk about some of the current events going on right now first things first since we are starting another fusion i like to take a snapshot of my supply count at the beginning of every fusion and summarize it at the end of the fusion with a post on my community tab page detailing how many resources i spent over the course of the fusion because there is a common misconception that fusions are ridiculously difficult and i think they are a lot easier than you might think if you are prepared then there's a big caveat around being prepared but uh, i took a snapshot this morning since it obviously started earlier today at least at the time of this recording so my gems were around 31 to 50 and then my silver was around 89 million i've gained a little bit since then just by champion training that's my focus um, looking over at the events going on right now uh, there i guess nothing <laughs> there are no events going on right now but dungeon divers is starting tomorrow so that's why you can see in my fusion plan i said that i was just going to do champion training today and then i would start doing the 
tournament for the uh, the dungeon tournament tomorrow to make sure we're double dipping with the dungeon divers event when it goes live and then we can take a look at the tournaments here we have a dragon tournament going on right now as well as the champion training tournament again i'm focusing on champion training with just the energy that we i get just by over time but i'm saving all of the refills as we can see here like the uh, daily uh, login ones here i'm saving all of those until the dungeon divers is live because of course you get credit for dungeon divers from both campaign as well as dragon so there you have it that is my fusion plan for brew guard jeroboam let me know in the comment section down below although i pretty sure what you guys are going to say but let me know if you are indeed going to be doing this fusion what i've been hearing from some people is that they're going to collect as many fragments as they can without you know blowing through the resources and just eat them into uh, or eat them towards high mother mod so that probably it could be a good strategy for a lot of people if you're still working towards her as i mentioned earlier i will be doing the entirety of the fusion and he will join the collection of the unsummoned legendaries in my portal as always if you did find this video helpful then be sure to hit that like button down below it really does help out the channel and feel free to subscribe to the channel if you are enjoying the content thanks for watching and have a good one